Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this bag here. If you look at it up close, it's got, you can see the bobble stitches. They're kind of just catty cornered from each other. And it's real easy to make. It's got nice texture on it. Um, I got these handles off an old bag that I got at the Goodwill store. Now, that's a good place to get handles just from old bags that you get at garage sales or resale shops. Or you can buy handles like this. They they sell handles, uh, eBay, Amazon, craft stores like Michaels and Joann's. Or you can make your own handles for this. And it also is lined. So it's just a simple liner. Um, doesn't take too long to do. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, for this project I'm using a Lion Brand Lion's Pride Wool Spun. It is a bulky 5 yarn. Now you don't have to use this brand, but any, but you need to use um, any type of bulky five will work. It is a 80% acrylic, 20% wool. There's 108 yards in this um, skein, and I used three and a half skeins, so you're going to need about 350, 375 yards of yarn. <clears throat> the color is called Stone Mix that I used. <clears throat> And then I'm going to be using a size K, which is a six and a half millimeter crochet hook. In addition to the yarn and the hook, you're also going to need some handles or you can make your own handles. Like I said, you're going to need a piece of fabric uh, to line with. I believe my size is, I, I got one of those little fabric sheets. They sell at Walmart and, and um, I think it was like 18 by 20 inches or 18 by 24 inches. And then you just cut it cut it to fit the inside of your bag and also you'll need a regular thread to match your um lining a uh, regular thread needle and some little pins to hold your fabric down while you're sewing it you don't have to have these but it's a lot easier and i want to take this minute to ask you not to forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already if you look in the description box of this video you will see a uh, auto subscribe button if you click on that uh, you automatically be subscribed and you'll never miss any of my updates so you want to go ahead and start off with a slip knot on your hook and then you want to work a chain of 42 now since I already got my big piece done I'm going to show you on a smaller scale but once you get your chain of 42 done, now if you want to make yours bigger or smaller, the multiple for this is a multiple of 6. But I did 42, so if you're following along with me, go ahead and chain 42. And then what we're going to do is single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. Remember, we do not count the one that's on our hook. So in the second stitch, go ahead and single crochet. And then we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. Just like that. Okay, once you make it to the end of row one, you should have a total of 41 stitches now. Now, this is a four row repeat. So now we're gonna start Row two is starts the repeat row. So what you want to do for row two is chain one and turn your work. Now we're going to put one single crochet into the first five stitches. And you want to go right here into the very, very first stitch and that counts as number one. So the very first one. So one, two, three, four, And five. Now we're going to put a bobble stitch into the next stitch. Now how we do the bobble is we yarn over, we're going to go into the next stitch and draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook. Now you want to do that a total of four times. So that counts as one. We're going to do it again. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops. So that's two times. Again, yarn over, same stitch, drop a loop, 
yarn over, go through the first two loops. That's three times. One more time, we yarn over, same stitch, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on our hook. You'll have five loops that remain. Yarn over and go through all five loops on your hook. I kind of give it a little tight pull. Go ahead and single crochet into the next stitch and that'll lock that bobble down like that. And now when you flip it over, there's your bobble. So we're kind of just going to repeat what we just did. So we need to do one single crochet into the next five stitches again. Now this single crochet that we just did to lock that bobble down counts as the first one. So that'd be one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to go ahead and bobble into the next stitch again. So we yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, and yarn over and go through the first two loops on our hook. We want to do that four times. So that was one, two, three, Four. You'll have five loops that remain. Yarn over, go through all five. Pull it kind of tight. Single crochet into the next stitch to lock it down. Like that. And again, one single crochet in the next five stitches. So this counts as our first one. So that's one, two, three, four, five and now we're going to bobble again into the next stitch five loops remain you're going to go through all five give it a little tug single crochet in the next and then, then that counts as number one so you need to do five single crochets again and then a bobble five single crochets in a bobble and you want to do that until you make it to the end of the row okay when you come to the end did your last bobble you single crocheted to lock it down that counts as your first single crochet you should have five single crochets that remain so that's one two three, four, and five. Now at the end of row two, you should have six bobbles. I remember I did mine smaller, so, but you should have six of those bobbles. So row three, we're gonna chain one and turn our work. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one single crochet in every stitch across until we get to the end of the row. So we put, start our first one right here in the very first stitch. And it's just one single crochet in every stitch. And then an end on top of every bobble. Now make sure you get this stitch here, right next to the bobble. And then you single crochet on top of the bobble. So here's your bobble. If you kind of flip it just a little bit, you'll be able to just kind of go right there on top of it. It doesn't have to be exact, just like that. And then every stitch still until you get to the next bobble. Make sure you get that stitch that's right next to the bobble. Sometimes I, I, I kept missing that one. And then on top of the bobble, just kind of take your bobble, flip it up, and kind of just right here on top of it. Do a single crochet. And you just continue working one single crochet in every stitch and one single crochet on top of each bobble until you get to the end of the row. Okay, when you make it to the end of a row three, you should have 41 stitches. Row four, 
we're going to chain one and turn our work. We're going to do bobbles again, but we're going to do them uh, kind of catty cornered from these. So we're going to do one single crochet into the first two stitches. So our first one is this very first stitch here. So there's one and two. Now we're going to bobble into the next stitch. Just like that. And single crochet into the next stitch. Now it's just one single crochet again in the next five stitches. So this counts as our first stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And then we bobble into the next stitch. Pull it tight, one single crochet in the next five. So that one counts as our first one. When we lock it down, there's one, two, three, four, five. Bobble in the next. And we're gonna repeat this pattern until we get to the end of our row. Bobble, or single into the next five. This first one that we lock down the bobble with counts as one, two, three, four, five, and bobble into the next, and just repeat that till you get to the end. Okay, when you make it to the end here, you should have two stitches that remain after your last bobble. So go ahead and pull that bobble tight, single crochet to lock it down, in one of them and then single crochet into the last and that'll end row four and now you should have seven bobbles at the end of that row and now you can see they're, they're catty cornered from each other row five chain one and turn our work now we're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch just like we did before so start with that first stitch, one single crochet in every stitch, and in one single crochet on top of every bobble until you get to the end of the row. On top of your bobble just like that and just continue that until you get to the end okay once you make it to the end of a row five you should have a total of 41 stitches again now all it is is a repeat of rows two three four and five so you just repeat row start for row six you would just repeat row two where we chain one and turned and we did single crochet into the first five. And then we bobbled into the next. So it's a really easy pattern. You'll find that it's the repeats real easy to follow. And then it's one single crochet into the next five. And then we just keep repeating that to the end and you can see it'll make your bobbles catty cornered. So you do that to the end and you'll have six bobbles and then you repeat a row of single crochet. And then you repeat this bobble row where you only do two single crochets and then a bobble. And then you do a row of single crochet. And then you repeat this row again, row of single crochet, repeat this bobble row, row of single crochet, go back and repeat this bobble row. So after every bobble row is a row of single crochet. And then 
it's just these two bobble rows that you repeat. So repeat rows, I hope I'm not confusing anybody. Uh, two, three, four, and five. Now you can do that as big as you want. I did a total of 63 rows. You wanna end in a row of uh, single crochet after your bobble row. So go ahead and finish that up and then we'll start lining the bag. Okay, once you get your piece of made here, we ended in that last row of single crochet there. I'm gonna tilt my camera down just a minute. A little bit, I'm sorry. You wanna go ahead and just clip that yarn off like that. Now I'm gonna put a little liner in it and I'm gonna do that before I sew the sides up. So what you do is you lay your piece out like this and you take your piece of fabric and cut it <clears throat> to size. Now I'm gonna have to lay mine sideways. Now what you wanna do though is make sure you have, mine's a little big, I'm not even gonna cut mine though. You wanna lay it out. You wanna make sure that you have enough that you can fold the sides over like that. So you got a little bit of an edge hanging. You see that? And then what I do is I just go around and pin it like that. Fold one edge at a time and then pin it on. That way it don't move, move around on you. But make sure you leave a little bit of an edge so you can sew it together later with the, with our yarn. But try to get it as straight as possible. <clears throat> and then you want to do the same for the top. Just fold it over. Leave a little bit of an edge on the top because we're going to be working on the top too here see it like that see how there's a little bit of an edge still left over at the top because we're still going to work on the top later we're just putting this liner in first and then go ahead and pin it down too you want to pin it down all the way around that just holds it there and makes it easier to sew it on And you got to fold the edge over like that so it's nice and clean and it's not so it won't be jaggedy. Turn to the other side here. Just straighten out the fabric. Fold your fabric up. Under. Leave a little bit of the side hanging. About like that. <clears throat> see that pin it down now this is just how a uh, simple way to line your bags when you're making them where you just fold the sides up and sew them together now if you know a better way to line them that's fine you can line it any way you want this is this Kind of a quick easy way to line the bag whenever you uh, make it like this turn it around on the other side flip it over just like that make sure you leave some of that top row exposed because we will be crocheting into that later we don't want to sew any liner to those top stitches pin it down just to hold it there while you sew it it's easier that way to pin it okay so we got our liner pinned on you know it doesn't have to be perfect just 
make sure you have a, a little bit of an edge on all four sides still hanging over so we can get it sewed up later and we'll be working on the top too putting a little top on it but now what you want to do is take some thread that matches your whatever color you chose for your bag so i got some black here and then we're going to get a regular uh sewing needle i'm not really like sewing very much by hand but i'm not really good at sewing at all actually i stink at it but so bad i can't even get a needle out of the compartment come on now Now you just want to thread your needle, however you can get it threaded. <clears throat> okay. You take your piece of thread and you put it through like that cut it however length you want to deal with it mine's it's yet to double i got double layers there and then you just tie a knot at the end i just take it and wrap it around my fingers kind of roll it and then kind of pull it and then cut these little ends off i don't know if that's correct but that's kind of how i do it and then you take your thread and then you just kind of start sewing your fabric on but you don't want your thread to bleed through to the other side although it mine would probably blend in pretty good i still don't want it to bleed through so i'm going to take it and i'm going to go through but i'm not going to go all the way through to the other side like that i'm only going to go halfway through the stitches like that through the top half of the stitches so that way my thread's not going through and then I'm going to go back through and go back now you can actually uh, work it sew it like over and over I'm actually going to go back through and up through then I'm going to go back through the top back through but I'm not going to go all the way through to the bottom down here I'm only going to grab par like partial stitches here again that's so my yarn or my thread won't doesn't bleed through back up through bottom try to keep it kind of in line a little bit neat if I can like I said I'm not that great at sewing so my liners sometimes are a little crooked, but that's okay. Nothing's perfect. And this is how I work it the whole Sew it on the whole way around my entire piece. Back and forth. Back up through the top. Try to keep my stitches in line the best I can. Back through. But only partially through stitches. Because you don't want it to go through to the other side it's a little time consuming it does take some time to do this patience your patience is good patience is a virtue so I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way around <clears throat> my whole liner I don't know if it would be faster with the sewing machine. I don't know 
if you can sew crochet. I don't know if it'll work with the crochet or not, but but I'm just doing mine by hand. And then when I get to a pin, I kind of just pull it out. And then I continue working until I get to my next pin and pull it out. And I'm going to do that around my whole piece. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up. And I'll meet back up with you when I get my liner sewed on. Okay, once you get your liner all sewed on, now I'm going to sew up the sides. So just put your sides together like this to where they're even. And you know, you got the right side of your work facing you. I'm using a yarn needle and just a piece of matching yarn now you can um slip stitch your sides together if you want um i'm just gonna go i do it both ways sometimes but i'm just gonna go ahead and sew the sides together now so just make sure you can start right at the top here and i'm gonna go through top two stitches and all you gotta do is kind of keep in line and make sure you match your stitches now i'm not gonna go like over and over i'm gonna go back and forth Imagine making sure I go through the same stitch on this side and the same stitch on this piece. Leave a tail there so I can sew that in later. And I'm just going to neatly sew my sides shut. I do this all the way down, matching up my stitches. Oh, got my thread up in the mix. And remember, if it's easier for you to single crochet than it is to someone like this, you can do it that way. Either way, it's fine. As long as it gets sewed up some way. So I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way down this side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, I got my size sewed up. Uh, the lining's in. And now I'm going to go around the top of my bag. So I went ahead and <clears throat> hit all my tails too. So just go ahead and get your yarn. And kind of just start somewhere in the corner here. Now the amount of stitches here isn't really important. We're just going to kind of do a little little bit of a rim on the top here. So just go through that stitch, <clears throat> excuse me, that stitch on the corner there and chain one. And then now we're going to go right back into that same stitch. Now we're only working on this side right now and do a single crochet. Like that. And now I'm going to work one single crochet, one single crochet in every stitch all the way across the top. And we're going to do it all the way around. Try not hide that tail back here as I go. So I'm going to work one single crochet here on every stitch. My tail's coming through. Across the top until I get over here to this side and I'll meet you right here and we'll go around the corner. Okay, I've made it over here to the corner. Now all we're going to do is just kind of jump over. So just kind of single crochet into the last stitch that you can on this side. And then jump over here and single crochet into the first stitch that you can on this side. And remember, the stitch count isn't really that important right now. So if you don't get exactly the same amount as me, it's not, it's not a big deal. So, And then you just continue working across the other side here. Put in one single crochet in every stitch until we get back down here to this side. Okay, when you make it back over to this side, again, just single crochet into the last stitch that you can here. And then you jump over here to your first single crochet that you made. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a stitch marker there. Uh, I'm just going to use a piece of yarn because we're going to work in rounds now. So go ahead and put a stitch marker right there. And jump over to this very first single crochet that you made. Not the chain one, but the single crochet and single crochet right into it. Now, I'm not going to count my stitches because it, like, it doesn't matter how many stitches you have. I don't even care how many I have. What I'm going to do now is a row of decreases. 
So we're going to do four single crochets in a row, and then we're going to do a single crochet decrease. So that first one that we did counts as our first one. So we need to do three more to make four. And then we're going to decrease over the next two stitches. A single crochet decrease is worked over two stitches. So you go into the next stitch and drop a loop, and then you go into the next one after that and drop a loop. And then you yarn over and go through the remaining three loops on your hook. That took those two stitches and made it into one. And that's what we're going to repeat now. Repeat all the way around. One single crochet into the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four, and then single crochet decrease over the next two. So go into the next one, drop a loop, the next one, drop a loop, yarn over and go through all three loops. One single crochet into the next four stitches, and then single crochet decrease over the next two, just like that. One single into the next four and decrease over the next two all the way around until you get back over here to your stitch marker. Okay I'm coming around to the end. Now however many stitches you have left decrease over the last two. It does not matter if you just if you decrease and only did one single crochet after that just decrease over the last two stitches. It doesn't matter. Even if you just did a decrease, do another one over the last two stitches, just like that. And then you move your stitch marker up. Remember, it doesn't matter how many stitches you have now. Now we're going to go around and we're going to work two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. So I moved my stitch marker up, so no more decreasing. I'm just going to work around putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get back to my marker. And then when I get back to my marker, I'm going to move it up and I'm going to go around again, working one single crochet in every stitch. So it's two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch now. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up and I'll meet back up with you as soon as I'm done. Okay, I've made it around and I did my two rows of single crochet after that last row of decreases. Now, if you want the brim of your bag to be taller, you're more than welcome to do as many rows of single crochet that you want. But whenever you get as many as you want, what you want to do is just to tie it off is here I am at my stitch marker. I'm going to go right ahead into the next stitch and slip stitch. And then I'm going to clip that off, move that stitch marker and hide that tail. And that'll be it for that. Now I want to sew on my handles. So that's what this looks like on the inside. Got a couple tails here to clip off. Um, now remember, if you don't have uh, any store bought handles, you can make your own. But here's mine. Mine actually have rings. And I'm just going to sew them on. I'm just going to eyeball it. And I'm just going to sew them on. Um, a couple rows down, like on the decrease row, with my yarn needle and yarn. And I'm going to just try to get them as equal as I can on both sides. So that's kind of how I do that. And, you know, these, this bag would look good with any type of handle. You know, uh, one long handle, two short ones like I'm putting on. You can make them homemade, however you want to do it. So, like I said, I just kind of eyeball it. So get it as equal as I can and then I'm gonna go about down to the decrease row maybe the row before the decrease row but you do it however you want you know it's your bag when well, you sew them on wherever you want but to sew them on I just sew them on just like this right around through the row really easy and I just keep doing it until I feel like it's really tight and like until I feel like it's not gonna come undone Remember, you make your handles however you want. I almost did make homemade handles for this. I think homemade handles will look great on it. That's kind of how I do it. 
when I have rings. So I'm gonna go ahead and get both my handles sewed on and you make your handles however you choose or if you got some store-bought handles you go ahead and get them sewed on. Okay once you get your handles on that's it that's all there is to it. I got these beads at Walmart in the clearance aisle I think for 75 cents and I just strung them on the ring there. I always like to put beads on my bag so I got both my handles sewed on aligned on the inside so it's good to go i think it turned out nice i hope you enjoyed my tutorial and i hope you were able to follow along okay uh remember don't forget to check down in the description box and you'll find that auto subscribe button just hit that so you never miss any of my videos and please don't forget to check out all my other tutorials i have hundreds of them on my channel and until next time have a good day